it's on screen. My help. Right. Okay. Okay, we're live on YouTube. Just waiting for one class to join and we're all in. Right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the last teaching live of the Easter term. I think most of you are probably breaking up at the end of this week. I know the schools uh, around where I live are. And, and the weather is finally, finally looking as though it's turning spring like it's uh, it's a nice day up here in uh, North Lancashire. Um, the daffodils are out. Um, the sun is kind of trying hard to peek through. It's not quite uh, properly sunny today, but it's it's trying hard. And uh, yeah, it's 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 looking. The birds are sort of tweeting and starting to make nests and what have you. So it's definitely look as though spring is around the corner. How's it with you, Pi? Yeah, same here. It's 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 looking good and it feels good. And I love this time of year because you think to yourself. I've only got five days to go and I'm on holiday for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I feel very, very tired from this term and I haven't been anywhere and done very well. I did go to Birmingham for two days, um, but everyone could do with the, hol the holiday. And then we're into the summer term. And once we got sats behind us for the year six, um, everyone relaxes a little bit and you're playing games outside and, uh, and I remember I used to hold lessons. We had a big tree on the edge of the playground. And uh, I used to take kids outside. <laughs> we'd have lessons underneath this tree, particularly maths lessons. There wasn't much maths involved, but uh, <laughs> I used to read to them. <laughs> Funnily Sorry, well, enough, we did quite well in maths. I never understood it. <laughs> no, I can't, can't imagine your class doing particularly well in maths. Right? We did. We were good at maths. So speaking, <laughs> speaking of the summer term, it's uh, we we announced our book for the summer term last week, um, and we're going to be doing Dark Whispers, which is uh, Vashti Hardy's second book in the Bright Storm trilogy. So there you go. Pi Pi's put it up. Yeah, a cracking read. And um, actually, if you haven't read the first one, then read the first one. Um, if you can grab a copy, read it at home over Easter or class teachers, you could read the first one, Bright Storm, which is a great read, um, a sort of preparation. And then um, you'd have enough time to read that through. Uh, and then we've got the second one. And actually at the back of this second one, is the um, she appoints me a ship's poet, uh, which is terribly exciting. So yeah, looking forward to that, John. How are you, David? I'm I'm very well, Pi. I I love this time of year. Honestly, it's my favourite thing. When the clocks go forward, it's lighter in the evenings. I play. I can play outside with my mates. Um, do all <laughs> sorts of stuff. Uh, it just feels better. I feel, I feel like you've got more of a life. Uh, with the lighter evening. So, and I'm looking forward to getting lighter and lighter and lighter and longer and longer and longer. But yes, top form I am. Hi, ready Good. to go. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, well, back by, <laughs> I know I know that this is your favourite game, so I thought that we would um, play it. So it's back by request, the old game, The City of Stars. Now, those of you who, if any of you have never played this before, uh, you need to be in pairs. And partner A jots down, let's say, five places. Now, when I say places, don't go for specific places like um, uh, London. You want what they call generic places like uh, a city. Um, so John, I think, is probably going to try and put the notes on the screen in the moment. But 
You've got a list of places there. You'll think of others. And then partner B goes for abstract nouns. Now, most nouns are concrete. That means you they're things that you can touch. And you can always put the A or an in front of them. So the book is concrete. You can touch the book. And you can call it the book, a book. Um, so that, And you can pluralize it. So you can say the book's on the shelf. So I know it's a noun. Abstract nouns you can't actually touch, but they are nouns. So um, the bravery um, of um, David Mitchell was uh, admirable. The bravery. So I know it's a noun. Um, the laughter that I heard. The wealth of many people. The brutality um, of uh, the enemy. The, the, the coldness that I felt in spirit. Uh, uh, in winter. So those are abstract nouns. You can't exactly touch them, but we know they're nouns because you can put the, a, or an in front of them. So uh, on the uh, right, we've got a list of abstract nouns. David is thinking of the ones he's going to go for. I'm looking at the places and I've got five places and he's got five abstract nouns. And we're going to put them together uh, and we'll do it one by one. And then we'll see if we can invent some things that you might see or touch or feel or hear in these different places. So, David, what's your first one? Uh, I've gone with courage. Courage. OK, so I had the swimming pool of courage. <laughs> so let's in, let's invent, let's invent a few things in the swimming pool of courage. I I'm saw dive in. I'm going to dive in there and be brave. Yes, I dived into the swimming pool of courage and saw i know what i'm going to have in the swimming pool and saw um a great white shark gliding towards me with its mouth open and its tummy rumbling <laughs> that would be the swimming pool of fear surely by <laughs> no it's courage because i'm going to wrestle with this thing okay <laughs> what about you david what would you see or hear or feel or notice there i would i jumped into the swimming pool of courage and in front of me lay the hottest curry on the planet. All right, you'd need courage for that. Okay, let's do another one. Um, so I've got my um, my word, my place. What, what have you got for your abstract noun? I've got a, really, a, a kind of a, a word not used very often. It's frailty. Oh, I've got the star of frailty. Okay, so now let's bring it alive. Um, on the star of frailty, I saw um, a burning, um, a burning leaf. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of skeleton leaf because I'm thinking of things that are frail. Yeah, uh, but I'll go with something else. Let's go with um, <laughs> on the star of frailty. I touched a dew-covered cobweb. Well, that's a nice one. A very, very fragile thing. Let's do another one then. I've got my word. What's your word? Um, I'm going for greed. Ah, oh, well, weirdly, I have the restaurant of greed. So in the restaurant of greed, <laughs> I discovered, you know, those enormous pyramids when they pile up donuts or whatever. I discovered a pyramid of chocolate donuts. Mm. Um, in the restaurant of greed, desserts, desserts covered in custard were displayed on a chocolate <laughs> plasma screen. I've always, you know, those things that you see were just like chocolate fountains. Have you seen those? Mm. I've always wanted to put my hand into one. <laughs> I don't quite know why. Actually, what I want to do is put my face into it. I, I know it would be sort of horrible and sticky, uh, but they do rather fascinate me. Now, John, I think everybody's got the idea right. of randomly putting two words together there to create some sort of magical idea. But what did you see there or touch there or find there? We only did one thing each. Obviously, you can spend more time. Um, but after two minutes, 
swap over so you get a chance at doing places and then after two minutes a chance at the abstract nouns or vice versa so, yeah so one of you needs to note down do them separately so you can't see each other's <coughs> one of you notes down five places one of you notes down five abstract nouns and then you're going to join them together and come up with uh, examples of things or feelings or whatever in each one and then uh, if you have time swap over so what i'll do is i'll start the uh, timer and then i'll bring the um list back up so you've got it on screen you can obviously you can think of your own so four minutes on the clock starting now
Right, that's the uh, end of the game. Um, I'm really hoping that somebody managed to pick the school of stupidity as their combination. <laughs> or, the, uh, <coughs> or the Academy of Hope, maybe, would be a better one. But never mind. So we need to get on to uh, the first writing activity of the morning, the Padlet activity. Well, what are we up to this morning? Well, um, absolutely nothing to do with what <laughs> we've done, which was a, a good bit of fun, but we do like to play that game every now and then. And I thought for our final task, our challenge is to, <clears throat> is to going to be to create <coughs> a set of instructions and explanations <clears throat> in terms of what do you do if you meet an alien and this is something I've thought about a lot particularly since my wife claims that when she was driving home this was about five years ago she was driving up the uh, the lane out there and she claims um, that she was followed by this very very bright white light that hovered over the car over the field and she ran in terrified um, so she reckons she's seen an alien. And of course, because I live in Stroud, the other thing which goes on an enormous amount is apparently there are uh, pumas living in the valleys and people take photographs of cats and dogs and pretend they're pumas. I don't know. I'm a bit of a cynic on both things, really. But it's not a bad idea to be prepared just in case. Now, of course, when you come to do yours, Instead of writing, what do you do if you meet an alien? It could be advice on what or instructions on what do you do if you meet a unicorn or a dragon or a goblin or a giant or a troll or some other <coughs> mythical creature of some sort. So what we got, first of all, um, John, is the whole business of making sure that we use that structuring language. If you're writing instructions first, next, then after that, later on and finally. There are different ways of organizing um, what you need to do. You could use those adverbs of time or you could go for bullet points, I suppose, or numbers or letters of the alphabet. But let's try these because these little ones coming up the front of the sentence always have a comma after them. So you've got to remember the capital letter, the comma and the full stop as well as thinking carefully about, OK, I'm writing instructions on what to do if you meet a storm dragon. So first, if you were meeting a storm dragon, first comma, and then you would have to come up with a decent piece of advice or an instruction. First, make sure that um, you are wearing um, fireproof um, clothing in case the dragon decides to cook you up for its dinner. So I think it's pretty straightforward in one way, John. Um, I've got first make sure you do not stare right into its eyes. Next, kneel down, then offer a greeting in a calm voice. After that, provide a present such as an Xbox. This is for an alien. Later on, make sure that there is plenty of water, food and blankets. Finally, hum a calm tune. Mine are relatively straightforward. I think uh, everyone's going to be able to come up with stronger ideas than those. But you've got to remember those adverbs of time. You don't have to start with first, but it might not be a bad idea. So off we go. And I can see we've got. We've got about 80 people on the go. More than that, David. Yeah, the study's come through now, Pipe. <laughs> and here in Ewan from St. George's Clune. Firstly, don't... <clears throat> excuse me. Don't disobey the goblin. Otherwise, you will find yourself... You will surely find yourself looking like a fried egg. Otherwise <laughs> is, is one word, uh, Nia and Ewan. Otherwise, your sentence is perfectly correct. First, do not make direct eye contact, Fatima and Kieran. First, you must make sure that you are dead quiet or else. <laughs> dang, 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 nice little bit of ellipsis there. And then uh, make sure you make sure not to look at it. 
I think you'd have to say what it is, Emily, um, in a weird way, because it might think you hate it and, and it will kill you. You're on to a good idea there. First, uh, Rory from Stonewood Woodford, first, do not let the giant platypus see any money, as that is its favourite food. <laughs> I think you've been watching. Um, what's the little creature? There's the, the Harry Potter spin-off series of films. And the, uh, the the main character has a little platypus-like creature that eats money. I've forgotten the name of it. So, Ethan, you've got some ideas there. Um, I wonder if you could take some of those and extend them a little bit further. It's a little bit brief, not particularly holding my attention. It looks as if you knocked it off quickly and left it at that. So it, push yourself, Ethan, see if you can extend some of those ideas. Yeah, Chloe with Stonewood Woodford again. You've you've whizzed it off dead quick, uh, dead very quickly. And I'd like to know, so it says, then give it some food or drink. For example, I'd like some more detail there, uh, detailed instructions. Finley from St. Patrick's, uh, COVID-43 is on their planet and the alien might have it. OK, so I'm sure you know that there are uh, there is there, there and there. <laughs> Which one should you have used there, uh, Finley? Uh, clue not the one you have used. <coughs> Luke at Clun or Clune, first enter the room and keep eye contact. Next, make sure you get in a position so that you can get away for many goblins are dangerous. Take no sort of weaponry for goblin, for goblins are easily agitated. <laughs> I like that idea of easily agitated, John. Yes, that's a good, good, good one. Yes. Um. Chloe, first smile to show that you are innocent. Next, compliment it, even if it's ugly. I like the way you've used the brackets there. I think probably it should have come within the sentence and after the final bracket, the full stop. Um, then give it some food or drink. John was saying we need a bit more precision there. What would you provide an alien with? Tough one. Huh. Mia from MJS. First, make sure the goblin doesn't see you. I'm A, wondering what sort of goblin. And where would you hide? How would you disguise yourself? A tricky one there. Bo from Ludham. Offer a great a gift of great value. I, I wonder a what you're oh it's extra extraterrestrial, uh, and then offer a gift of great value. I wonder what that would be. There's a man at the top of the telegraph pole outside my window. Good grief! <laughs> what he's doing? Come on, Pi, concentrate. I can't concentrate. There's a man at the top of the telegraph pole. <laughs> I, had, I had children in my class just like you. I like Cole and Reese's from St. Patrick's. First, make sure to never stop making eye contact because uh, because if you turn your back on it, it will bite your head off. That's uh, <laughs> an interesting one. Extreme. <laughs> Somebody got a... Pippa and Freya from Clon slowly, then slowly approach it and pet it whilst cracking an egg on your head. <laughs> yeah, I've just spotted that one. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's thinly. Give it a gift, like a giant bar of chocolate. Well, I'm wondering, and we could have a discussion on this, is what is the best bar of chocolate or chocolate bar? What, what, what variety would you go for? Wow. <laughs> there's a can of worms pie i know i had a lion bar the other day and it, it was terribly sweet actually it, i didn't it I, I, I like um i don't really like uh chocolate bars uh, i do like however dark chocolate i'm a big fan of uh high percentage 
Chocolate, dark chocolate. Yeah, it's my favourite. Chloe and Fia, MGS. Make sure you don't provoke it in any way. I like that. In order to do this, you need to supply them with presents, such as little, uh, I've lost it now, chunks of cake or a shot of lemonade. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by dressing it up, John. It, it's sort of yes. extending the idea, making it a little bit particular um, with a bit of detail. So, Aidan, you've got a couple of ideas there, but I'm wondering what gift would you give and what variety of car? Yeah, Louise from Stonewood Woodford. Then if the Pegasus comes closer to you, that's their way of showing that they trust you. Oh, that's, that's a good that's... idea there. <laughs> Aliza and Salim. First, swing the goblin by its ear into a bag. <laughs> <laughs> they love this. <laughs> Very good. I like that. Oh, dear. It's, the way <clears throat> it's by its ear. <laughs> I'm going to create big, big, big ears, though. Are yeah. they? Huge ears. I'm going to create a society for the protection of goblins. <laughs> this is not fair on a goblin. We need a poster. Do not be cruel to goblins. Yeah, no, that's funny. That's witty. When, when you say something's witty, it means it's 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 funny, but it's it's clever, clever wit. A nice one here from Rory from Stone with Woodford. Then, oh, it's just moved. Oh, there it is. Um, then try to amuse the giant platypus with silly dances, but don't tap dance as it finds this offensive. <laughs> <laughs> How would you know that? <laughs> oh, it's a well, it's a well-known fact, John. <laughs> Christopher from Bolton Parish sneak around the basilisk very quietly, as its eyes alone can kill you. And waking it up as a dumb way to die and an absolute death wish. And it's, it's a little bit informal, that, but I think it works. And I'm liking that, a dumb way to die, because you've got that alliteration in there, which gives it a bit of oomph. Now, Chloe, I, I like your dropping in with the brackets there. After that, give it something that it would like preferably not your bed. Um, the way you punctuate it, Chloe, is after the word like, take that full stop off. You need a small P for preferably, and then you have one full stop after the final, not inside the brackets, but after the brackets. Just have a chat with your teacher about that. Make sure I've got that right. I think I am. Right, we need to come out of the Padlet. A lot of good ideas there, John. And in the main, we did remember to put that little comma in after that fronted adverbial. So we're we're on the go now. What have we got next? Have we got a? Yes, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, amusing myself at Neve and Ollie's uh, from St Patrick's. Uh, hold the door open for the kitchen and make it make the giant some soup. Yes, I'm sure giants love a bit of soup. So we need to go to um, the session page. Have we got any audio this morning, David? We have. We had, we had lots of audio. <coughs> um, this group's really good at uh, putting audio in. We've got two, two schools in particular, uh, St. Patrick's and Bolton Parish, week in, week out, try hard with their audios. Um, if, there, if there are any other schools, if you're trying to do it and it's not working for any reason, do let me know. Uh, we can guide you through that. Uh, so uh, this week I've chosen one. It's, it's quite quite long, two and a half minutes long. Um, and what I like about this is the way that this person opens each little paragraph. And this is from Callum in P7 at St. Patrick's in True. And I'll just turn the volume up so you can hear this. I think P7 is year six, isn't it, John? I it is. So, yeah. Dear Caroline, 
I'm writing to persuade you to quit your tiring life to superhero. Become an amazing supervillain. The first point is that you can't stop working as a hero. You, you need to always be ready to help others. But as a villain, you only work when you want to. And you take as many breaks as you want to. I would also like to argue that your powerful superpowers are much better suited for being a great supervillain than for being a superhero. Furthermore, I'm concerned that you're not getting paid nearly as much as you should for saving oh so many people from death's grip. But as a villain, you're paid handsomely for the smallest of deeds so you can live in comfort instead of living in that old apartment that you've rented for just so long. The building's concern, I would like to note that everyone is still scared of you, even when you save them, even when you save them, and you never get the respect you deserve. When you're a villain, everyone congratulates you on your amazing robberies. I would like to point out that as a hero, you never get much attention. You never get as much attention as the other heroes. But as a villain, your name will be the headline of every newspaper. Some people claim that you could simply ask the government for more money. This would not work, as they would just give you a pat on the back and send you back out the door. Although some people suggest all these solutions, we believe the only way to get a better pay is to become a, super, a powerful supervillain and work alongside the best of the best in the criminal underworld. However, if the government do somehow catch you, they will take your powers from you and give it to a high bidder. But if this did happen, we would have every criminal bidding for your powers and help and, and helping you to escape from the hands of the evil government. So you should not be scared of anything to do with being a villain. Alternatively, you're just held in a super prison that, that sits on Shark Island. We'll we'll have we'll just have a week uh we'll just have a week criminal switch squad with you, setting you free. But some people say we won't find someone to switch spot with you. This is not correct. Because we would give this person a large sum of money for their help in this operation. The main reason for this is that you would be the you will be the best villain in the universe and would likely prop up the crime world's trades. We believe this because your superpowers are the best for crime that we have ever seen. <laughs> so lots and lots and lots of reasons there. Uh, trying to persuade him to become a super villain, not a superhero, Poe. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a terrific piece of writing. Very extended line of argument going on there, <laughs> using all of those little tricks like, I would like to argue that. Furthermore, I'm concerned that. To build on this concern, I would like to point out. So you've got all that good arguing language which, you, which you're going to need, whatever you're writing about, and lots of good ideas. And once he got going with it, really nicely read, full of expression. What did you make of that, John? Yeah, I, I was it was really good, actually, uh, Callum. Lots of uh, you you used the framework and the language that Pi um, um, gave us last week very very effectively. You just need to make sure that when you're reading one or two bits, you you sort of uh, ran your words together a bit. You need to slow it down. Make sure it's very clear. Uh, to the to to the listeners, but apart from that, fantastic bit of writing, well done. So we'll go on to. Um, if I just share the screen, we'll go on to today's live writing jotcast. Just still looking at those ones, John. There's some very interesting extended pieces of writing. Um, so well done. Um, a lot of good ones from Bolton Parish, I noticed there as well. So, OK, let's have a look at what we're doing Ah, oh, now. Huh. Well, some of you were already doing this. So this is where we add in a bit of explanation to back up the instruction. So in blue, I've got my um, my adverb of time to organize things. And then in red, I've got what we call causal language. So causal language uh, is the language you use that explain things. So the, the most obvious one is the word because. And I put them in blue down the bottom, because, as, so, so that, as a result, since, consequently, this causes, the reason that, this means that, this results in, therefore, and when. Some of you were already doing it, adding an explanation on. So I had, first, make sure you don't stare right into its eyes. Now I'm going to add the reason why. 
so that it does not feel threatened. Next, kneel down, since this will result in the intruder feeling you're not a threat. Then, offer a greeting in a calm voice. Full stop. As a result, a conversation may well begin. After that, provide a present such as an Xbox. Xbox. Consequently, there can be an exchange of gifts. Hopefully, this will result in a friendship. And then my later on one, later on, make sure there is plenty of water, food and blankets. The main reason for this is that your intruder may be cold and starving, having travelled a long distance and therefore be in a bad mood. Finally, I'm a calm tune. This will mean that a calm atmosphere is created. So we're looking for extending the ideas, John, by giving some explanation as to why you've made the suggestion. And again, it, it might be useful to choose if you did a goblin. Now choose what on earth would you say to something else, like a go for something opposite, like a, a giant or a huge troll that suddenly appears at the back of the school. And you're going to be offering instructions to people as to what to do and why. So you've got to get that causal bit on, John. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Well, uh, yeah, that's an important that's an important part so that anybody reading it understands the reasons you're doing yes. what you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, instructions on their own can be quite you know, tell you what to do, but they don't give you the reasoning behind behind it. So we're trying to add in some reasoning here. A little bit harder, I think. So John's, when approached by a grizzly bear, Comma, as he's got his subordinate clause there, that fronted adverbial. Look it straight in the eye. Now he's got to get his explanation in, in the eyes, in order to hold its attention. Then run for it. <laughs> and run like a rabbit. Okay. So off we go, John. So I, ha I haven't explained the second bit there, Pi. I didn't no. know. <laughs> Hopefully it's self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, if you if you run like a sloth, you'll soon get eaten by the grizzly bear. Accelerate. <laughs> as fast as you possibly can. Though I have heard, heard that if a grizzly bear sees you, that running is not what you should do because it, they sort of instinctively chase. I, I suspect you're possibly right. I don't really want to uh, test the theory, though. Like Martha and Macy, the way they've started theirs. After that, pray for a minimum time of five minutes so that you do not seem like a danger to the troll. Perfect. See if you can crack on with another one. And you and Ania um, from St. George's later on reassure that you proceed with caution. This is because greedy goblins are an easy target when calm. I think actually after caution, you might need a full stop there. I think it's a new sentence. Mm. Joshua from Stonewood Woodford. First, if you meet a hippo... <coughs> Then you'll need to climb a tree because they can't climb trees. I don't think you need the then uh, there, but that's uh, that's that's good. I think it, if I'm right in saying that hippos are the most dangerous animals in Africa, I think I'm right in more dangerous than lions. Yeah. I wouldn't want to meet a hippo. <laughs> no, they're quite um, aggressive, I believe. And, Louisa and first. Mix. Make sure that you have warm gear on that covers your whole body so that you have no frostbite injuries from the ice dragon or from the cold air. Well done. You've got your causal words in there perfectly. 
and Caleb and Kira, make sure you're not wearing any purple whatsoever. I think that's one word whatsoever, you two, as the creature will feel like he's being challenged to a battle to the death. <laughs> Great idea. Now, Ashley, you need to, if you can, explain why when you get approached by a unicorn, you don't stare into its eyes. You've got steer into its eyes. You want stare into its eyes, that air sound, of which there are several options as to how you spell it. So, Luke from Clune, you need to uh, just go through yours and, and uh, sharpen up the punctuation. It's a really good idea. Make sure... Uh, Make sure to stare right into its eyes, for it is a lot stronger than you. If you don't, it will rip you to shreds. Now, you've got a couple of sentences in there, Luke, and also you need um, a, possibly a comma after eyes as well. Next comma, do not show fear. <clears throat> Otherwise, it will realise you are not the alpha and take you for weak, causing it to challenge you, and it is a fact you will lose. Now, I think you've got a, a comma or two in there as well. Um, <clears throat> Lewis and Huey from MJS. First, don't move until the dragon has calmed down because it attacks at movement. So you're getting, uh, and Ralph, you're getting that explanation in there um, using because. Um, <laughs> Anna from Fisherton, um, have a look at your punctuation in that sentence. You put in a full stop, and I don't think you need it. <clears throat> and Bo from Ludham is offering some very sound advice, Pi. Um, he needs to look up how to spell terrestrial, but it is a tough word, so I'll let him off on that one. First, do not look the extraterrestrial directly in the eyes so that it does not devour your soul and brutally murder everyone and everything you love. And advice. Well, it's a bit like <laughs> Kieran's. First, you must say dead quiet. I think you probably need a full stop there, Kieran. If it hears loud sounds, it will attack nonstop until it's turned you into human casserole. <laughs> <Not that. laughs> and again, that's sort of witty. It's clever. It's a bit <laughs> unexpected. It catches our eye. It's not over the top but it, it, it's it's a funny way of putting things yes i, I think this is a sort of writing where you can you have license to be a little bit silly and then um, you can be a little bit gruesome if you want to be first make sure you do not break eye contact as the beast will will feel threatened if broken yeah. i think you need to add if it is broken so you the, so that the uh, it's clear that you're referring to the eye contact Otherwise, you might think it's the beast that's broken. <clears throat> so try and get remember to get the causal language in. If a dragon randomly approaches, keep calm and approach it slowly so you don't spook it. That's not so yeah. Two, two approaches in there. Sorry, John. Sorry, Hamad from Year Three in Bolton Parish. Hamad, you need to add your causal language here you've done the first bit perfectly well first don't do direct eye contact for more than five seconds because or in case in case the dragon mistakes it for aggression or something like that just to explain why you need to um, not um, hold eye contact Jack, year three, Bolton Parish, later on, reassure that you proceed with caution. That's a slightly odd way of saying it. Um, this is because greedy goblins are an easy target when calm. That last bit you've got spot on, Jack. Well done. <laughs> Lily, next, tell the alien to sit on the green chair so that his or her legs do not hurt. Uh, 
like Dylan's idea of giving a, a deep bow of respect. He's, he's, he's invented alien control and give us the phone number, which is good. Alice, when approached by a hooded man, always make sure you have your evidence of their identity before inviting them in. Sound advice, that, Alice. Yes, I think we're all going to keep away from hooded men. <laughs> Sounds creepy, doesn't it? And Lily... If you're approached by a great white shark while scuba diving, make sure you have no open wounds and slowly swim up to the surface. I think that probably is accurate and good advice there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to put myself in, in a scuba suit facing a great white shark and then thinking, hmm, I'll just swim slowly up to the surface <laughs> as opposed to just panicking. Um, which I think is what I would do. Yeah, and blessing from Bolton Parish, exactly the same. When approached uh, by the lion, I think you need to add their blessing. When look it straight in the eye and keep calm. And you just need to add your causal language there, blessing, uh, because if you don't, it will eat you. I think it probably would anyway. Now, you and Ania from St George's, when intruded by a goblin. I think I think you need when a goblin intrudes. Intrudes means go into somewhere you're not supposed to be. So when a goblin intrudes into your house, please ensure you bring a cheesy covered cracker to tempt the creature into the cave. If its rule is not followed, the king goblin will send his army against you like a never ending avalanche. And I, I love that idea. Well done. And then Jacob from all, Bolton. All for the lack of a cheesy covered cracker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bolton, uh, Jacob has got, when the killer tomatoes come, get a pan and put them on the stove. Heat them for dinner with some juicy chicken enticing wedges. You, you need a bit of explanation in there. But <laughs> the idea is, um, is funny. And Zav and Adelaide from MGS. First lay on the floor so that it thinks you're dead. Then carefully crawl your way to your destination like a turtle. I like that turtle idea. You could extend it with a bit of explanation. Okay, I think we need to come out of the... We could read these all day, Pi. <laughs> They're definitely making me chuckle. Um <laughs> We'll have a quick look in the gallery. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was drawing superheroes, and we've got it was, and there's quite a lot from <coughs> Bolton Parish. That blessing, uh, uh, that's a great Wonder Woman blessing. And um, a few there from Clun, Clun, Clune, Clune, I think. Clune, St George's in Clune, Bolton Parish. A couple of nice pages from Clune. I like to see that. I'm. As you know, I, I like that idea of drafting it. And then when you got it, absolutely, you do a really good double spread with a bit of illustration. So you're at the top of your game. Look at the Spider-Man one from Mustafa in Bolton Parish. That's a bold design, isn't it, John? Very striking. Yes. It's even got eight legs. Well done, uh, Mustafa. There's some terrific stuff. I like, I, I noticed Olive from back. Uh, Barclays earlier uh, you don't need to um, have superpowers to be a hero uh, yeah. post, which is, a, which is a, a nice message and I like Sophia from uh, Bolton Parish's Hulk logo that's a, that's a good one yeah very strong design again very bold strikes you stands out uh, Super Elmo from Eva from Evie from Barclay as well um, so nice to see lots of schools getting involved with the uh, their superpowers, uh, superheroes, um, and then uh, um, bubble f bubble blower uh, Amelie from Clune has it has uh, um, given her super uh, uh, superhero that she's explained what her powers are. So very good, uh, excellent stuff. What's the uh, gallery challenge this week, Pi? 
I was just gone down, looked at, but uh, there, there are quite a lot on there this week. Um, yes. Forest Academy, all sorts. Well done, everybody. Getting good at that. Well, not surprisingly, <laughs> um, because it's aliens that's in my that was in my head. Here is the alien spaceship labeled. Quite a nice one to do because it's a fairly straightforward design. Um, so again, I'd sketch it in pencil first, so you can always rub it out if it's not quite right. Um, and then I think that's probably watercolored by Lisa Tilbury, um, who's worked with us before. But a nice little design there, got three legs. I like the I way she used the uh, the shading to to create shadow and light. Yes. <clears throat> so she's imagined where light is shining onto the. Um... Yes to the uh, flying saucer and then uh, uh, so she's got the panels dark around the edges and light uh, where the light hits them yes. same with the legs so yeah the legs adds, are well done aren't they it adds it adds a lot of depth to the uh, to what is a very simple drawing and then on the next page that's the that's the actual meeting where the um the ship has come down, and just then you get this ray of light, which maybe moves the alien up and down. I don't know. Um, so you don't have to do an alien. You alien choose spaceships and alien monsters and what have you, anything like that. Yep, it has to have a bit of fun with it, I think, Pi. Absolutely, yes. It's our, our last one. And then... Um, now we go to the blog challenge. We'll have a look at that, which not surprisingly is to write instructions. What you do if you meet a dragon, a goblin, a troll, a giant, a unicorn, etc. What to do if you meet an alien. So I've got my introductory paragraph here. If you are surprised by an unexpected meeting with an extraterrestrial, and I had to look that up, John, because as you said, <laughs> It's a tricky it's a one. Difficult word to 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 uh, spell. Yeah, so it's hard to say actually because it's not extraterrestrial; it's extraterrestrial. <laughs> so, read these instructions to discover what to do. If a UFO is so, I've instead of rhetorical questions, I I've used that if idea. If a UFO has landed in your back garden and you find yourself face to face with a green being from the other side of the galaxy, these instructions may well save your skin. Luckily, no special equipment is required. Now, when you do yours, you might have specialist equipment and you can use a colon to introduce the list. What you might do first. So one, first, check that this is really is an alien, as this might lead to an awkward situation with the postman. Identifying features may well include scaly skin and huge eyes, talking in a strange language, weird clothing and peculiar shape that is non-human, communication with telepathy, and keeps muttering about going home. I think that would describe my placement very well, Pi. <laughs> and there's a little reference there to E.T. Go home. <laughs> uh, oh, ah, I had one and then I've got another one. This should be two. Yep. Two, next, be wary of shaking hands, trying a high five or waving at an alien because these may be taken as a sign of aggression. Try a simple start to any conversation so that you create a good impression. Good openers might include, hi there, I'm Kevin. Welcome, matey. Would you like a Big Mac? How are you doing, old chum? I like the green tights. Did you get them at Accessorize? So I, that, that made me chuckle, all of those. I thought that's funny. Um, and then the next one is finally. I'm just, I'm just slightly mystified as, as to how you know about Accessorize Pie. I have two daughters. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> finally, if the alien seems aggressive, then you have a few options. Shout, go back to where you came from. Set Barker on them. Now, who do you think Barker is, John? I imagine it's your dog. It's the dog, yes. Yeah. Set Barker on them. Think about cold custom with a thick skin on top and send a telepathic message. Telepathy is where 
apparently i don't know i can't do it but where you sort of with your mind send a message from you speak in your mind so if i i'll if i could send one to john i'd speak it in my mind and then he would hear it in his head and, and david would hear it in his his head not it's getting not getting yeah, anything. you're not getting anything i well, no, i'm not surprised it's something that when we were at school we used to try and do uh, and we also used to try and do that thing of moving objects where we'd all sit around staring at a pencil or something. And then, you know, there'd always be somebody called Kevin who said, no, it moved, it moved. And he'd be shoving the table and all of this going on. David's we... falling asleep here. <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> I better carry on. So we got the cold custard idea. If they love yellow, you're in trouble. If the above fails, then run. If you ever do meet an alien, so I'm on the if again. Bear the above instructions and suggestions in mind. Make sure you do not make them feel under threat. The consequences of this could be catastrophic, especially if the aliens are armed with superior laser guns. How to know if you've been abducted by aliens? Did you wake up one morning and not know where you'd been? Is there a gap in your memory? Are there strange marks on your body? Did you find an unusual object or device in your pocket? Do you dream of flying? Have you started talking to an invisible friend? So I think it is one having a little bit of fun with um, John, set of instructions or advice with some explanatory <laughs> language in there as well. Have a bit of fun with it. Do some illustrations. Get yourself a nice double spread there in the book. Right. Well, thank you very much. Pi and David, uh, that's it for Teaching Live for this term. We'll be back after the Easter break. Um, I can't remember the date off my head. All the dates are on the website. Please do uh, sign up now for next term's Teaching Live. It's Vashti Hardy's Bright Storm. And if you fancy a bit of grammar work, we're doing um, 10 daily SAT sessions. Um, before the SAT tests. I know you'll be looking forward to those, those of you that are in year six in England. Uh, if you're in Wales and Scotland, you won't be bothered with such things. Um, but if you're in England, we're doing 10 daily uh, grammar sessions <clears throat> in the run up to SATs. So hopefully you can join us for either the literacy, uh, the creative writing as you have been doing or the grammar sessions or both, but please, Make sure you get signed up this week if you can. And uh, so that's it for Teaching Live for this term. We hope you enjoy your Easter, well-earned Easter break. And uh, uh, we will see you at the start. It's amazing that, that when we get back after Easter, we'll be talking about the summer term. Uh, that's it from us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, great work, everybody. Fantastic term. Well done. Some great writing. Yeah, bye-bye, everyone. Look forward to reading what you write.